I have been appointed as the incoming advisor to the DAP Secretary General for the past uh, year or so since I joined DAP. And I thought it's right for me to talk about the economy and talk about the issues affecting the country in the economic sector today. Why is it happening? Is our economy really in trouble? Why is our pocket shrinking? Is your pocket shrinking? Are your pockets shrinking? Yeah. Do you have enough money? No. Stupid question. <laughs> Malaysia. Malaysia, 40 over years ago, 41, 42 years ago, in 1966, was one of the most developed nations among developing countries in Asia. It was one of the most developed nations among developing countries in Malaysia. Did you know that in 1966, our average income, each of you, your average income is three times that of South Koreans. Three times that of South Koreans. That means our income was approximately 330 US dollars per person, while an average South Korean was only making 130 US dollars per person. In a short period of 24 years, less than three decades, 1990, we achieved parity. Achieved parity. In a short, short, um, 14 years after that, very short, 14 years after that, do you know that an average Korean makes three times the income of an average Malaysian? I'll come to that. An average Korean now makes three times the money that an average Malaysian makes. So what is the government telling us that our economy is doing very, very well? Is it true? No! Are they cheating us? Yes! I'll talk more about that as well. Look at the South Korean team. In 1966, we were trashing them. 3-1 score lines was usual in Madeka Cups. We have our Mokta Dahari, our So Chin An, doing very, very well for footballs in football tournaments. Damn, what we have today? We couldn't beat Cambodia! We can't even beat Cambodia! In 2004, South Korea reached the semi-finals of the World Cup. Semi-finals, top four country in the world. Where is Malaysia today? Anyone knows? This year's rankings. 161. 161. Paisei ah. I don't know where to hide. It's the same thing for our economy. It's the same thing. Let's look at something closer. Let's look at Singapore. Anyone know how big a Singapore is? They call it a tiny red dot. They call it a tiny red dot. And Malaysian politicians like to insult Singaporeans as a tiny red dot. Malaysia in land size is 400 over times the size of Singapore. Land size, 400 over times. In terms of population, we are more than six times the population of Singapore. Are we six times richer? No! The whole entire economy of Malaysia, the entire country add together, not just Peninsula Malaysia, but we include Sabah and Sarawak, which is supposed to be so rich with so much potential. So much potential. It is only 10% more or 10% larger than the tiny red dot below us. 10% larger. The entire economy of Singapore is nearly the size of Malaysia's economy. And based on the current rate of growth that our government is so proud of, within a short period of seven years, we just keep it the same rate of growth, within a short period of seven years, Singapore becomes a bigger economy overall than Malaysia. What shame. Tiny island. They have nothing. Do they have oil? No. Do they have tin? No. Do they have oil palm? No. 
Do they have land? They have nothing. So why is it that they are doing so much better than us? What if the day comes when DAP is decimated? That will be a very, very sad day indeed. With your support, we hope never it will happen. This is what is happening to our school. I had a talk where I spent 45 minutes just listing down all the happenings whereby principals attempt to religiousify our secondary and primary schools. At 45 minutes, I couldn't stop the... the, 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 the The role of an MP, the role of an MP is to change and amend or improve the laws of this country. That is what the parliament is for. It's called member of parliament, not member of drainage system. I agree. Local councils are not effective. Useless, very slow in clearing rubbish, very bad in paving roads. Because why they all contract out to their kawan kawans, who will then contract out to their kawan kawans, who then contract out to their kawan kawans, who then contract out to the poor guy who has to do it for 10% of the cost. <laughs> That's what's happening for local councils. But to repair that damage to the real source of the problem, MPs must get to the real source of the problem and not do the work on behalf of the local councillors.